Thank you for joining us to our eChurch family, MFM family, our friends around the world. We love you. God bless you. Now you know this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And I know, Pastor, they are already glad because they are tuning into this service. God bless you. Bless you. I want to go to 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Paul is writing to us in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse 20. When you have it, say, <clears throat> say, I have it. I want to read 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse 20. Just want to read one verse. We're going to move around through this. I'm going to jump back over to the second chapter. It's going to be a little, little teachy, a little meaty. You want to write a few things down, feel free to do so. So in the first Corinthians, the fourth chapter and verse 20, and it says in King James, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The NIV says it brighter. You might have another translation yourself, but the NIV says it like this. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Anybody ever watch that movie Power or that, that sitcom? My subject this morning is unlocking the power. Unlocking the power. It's, it's amazing that we have charges, various charges for these phones nowadays. I have one that I can lay this phone on the charger and it starts charging. I laid it there one night and woke up and it was on empty, no charge. We have power cords that we can plug these phones into to make sure that they are also generating and receiving power. But some happens along the way, the battery gets worn out and it still loses its power. Have you ever been so frustrated to want power in your phone? And you looked up and you only had a little bit of bar left. Lack of power thereof caused great frustration because it didn't have the right connection. Power here in this text Paul is speaking about is dudamas. It's an inherent, inherent power. It's the power that, that, re, that reproduces itself or becomes a dynamo or enthusiastic. You ever notice some believers when they first get saved, they're happy about Jesus. Then all of a sudden, they're, they don't know if they like Jesus or not. Some happen, the joy goes away. The enthusiasm just leaks right out. Evidently, they do not stay connected to the power source. The dynamo here, the dynamo is, a, is like a machine that's constantly creating and, and doing its own thing and creating energy the faster it turns. It's not a dead life, but it's a live and active life power. Scripture says in Luke 24 and 49, Jesus is speaking to the disciples about this power. And he tells them, tarry in Jerusalem and wait there until you be endued or clothed with power from on high. Luke 24 and 49. You don't catch the Holy Ghost each Sunday. Some of us need it seven days a week, especially at home. So this is something you want to be clothed with. They waited in Jerusalem until they were endued or clothed with power from above. Write down Acts 1 and 8. You shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts 2 38, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is power. It's a gift. Acts 8 and 18, and they laid hands on them, Samaritans now, and they received the Holy Ghost. Some of my contemporaries and pulpiteers think that this is only for the book of Acts and is no longer, is no longer relevant for today. But how many are so glad you got the Holy Ghost today? Amen. Everybody couldn't raise your hand. That's all right. You'll get it before this service is over. But the Holy Ghost is needed, especially today. He's a comforter. He's a paraclete. He's a come alongside. Acts 9, 17, Ananias said to Saul, Jesus sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Even a murderer like Saul had to receive the Holy Ghost. And I'm glad he did while he was in the church. Acts 10, 44, watch it. The Holy Ghost fell upon all of those who heard the words that Peter was preaching. Hey, you can't keep coming to church and don't get the Holy Ghost. 
You can't keep watching by live stream and don't let this word sit in your living room and you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we'll know when you got it because you're going to have some power. We talked about here in this power in, in Acts uh, 10 and 38, how the power has activity within it. Watch this young man, purple shirt, like this shirt. Said God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. And God was with him. When you have the Holy Ghost, Acts 10, 38, you go about doing good. You don't get the Holy Ghost and keep cutting up, acting up, and being bad. Some of your wives are so glad your husband got the Holy Ghost. If I set a praise break right now, you'll run around this room. Some of you glad your children got a little bit of the Holy Ghost and coming on into more. If they had it, it would make a difference in their lives. Last scripture, and then we're moving to thought, talk. Ephesians 5 and 18, we are not to be filled, we are to be filled, I'm sorry, with the Spirit. Filled up, maintaining a level of the Spirit. Ephesians 5 and 18. The power exists then in the lives of the believers and even in us now. The question this morning is, how do we, Pastor, unlock the power? And reaching our full potentials, potentials of qualities, of maturity, it is becoming and doing more. Say, I want to be able to do more with this power. We grew up in the church and we thought the power was just shouting. <laughs> it's more than just a shout. It's more than just a holler. It's more than a roll on the floor. This power transforms lives. Paul here in this text in, in Corinthians was writing to the Corinthian church and the Corinthian church had a lot of wonderful gifts in it. And he wanted them to understand the real power that was operating within his life versus within their life. Timothy being the son of Paul in the gospel, it, taken, it came and uh, arrived on the scene after the letter got to the Corinthian church. And there Timothy came to, uh, to endorse the letter and make sure that it was implemented what Paul had written. He returns back to Paul and gives an account and of the progress of the church. In the context we see here in 18 and 19 verse, uh, there were some people talking about their faith, but just talking, just talking. You ever seen those, those talky, talky Christians talking about it, but living a very little talking, talking, talking. The words are good and they're, 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 they're exciting to hear, but we want to see the demonstration of the dynamo of the dudamas of the power of God. So therefore, Paul says, the power that I'm talking about, the kingdom of God, is demonstrated was not just only in words, but it was in power. Come on, let's keep studying. First Corinthians, second chapter, watch what he says over there. First Corinthians, second chapter, a few pages back. For I was with you in weakness or infirmities, Paul's saying, and in fears and much trembling and in much speech. And my preaching was not in enticing or demonstrous doctrinal of words of human men, my words of wisdom of men, he says, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Somebody say power. Paul was not talking about it. He was being about it. He says there in, second, in first Corinthians, the second chapter, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men talking, but in the power of of God, Dudamas, miraculous, miracle working power. For the kingdom of God, he says, is not by living out, which should be lived out, just not just by talk, but by demonstration in any person's life. There's a big difference between knowing all, knowing it all, the right words, and then there's another difference of living them out. It's just not to be content with having the, all the right answers about Christ. Let our lives now show the power of God and the reality of God that we walk with the Lord. How many are glad you have power enough to stop your tongue every now and then? Now, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Bring, bringing light and transformation everywhere you go. Your power to walk into a dark place, a depressed place, a sad place. But the power of the Holy Ghost to rest upon you as believers transforms the world around you. Power outage. We open up with that. What would it be like if you didn't have the spirit operating in your life? What would life be like without the gift of the Holy Ghost? It's similar to having a power outage, electrical power shortage in our personal lives. 
years ago, we were at Durango High School, and we were having service on a Sunday morning. We got there, I shared this with you before, and we were excited to be in this new auditorium, and it's anything can go wrong. Durango High School in the gymnasium. We came up, and we got into the building. Before we knew it, the fire alarm went off. Something was going on. The power just stopped. We had to get out the building because there was no power. In this building right here, shortly after we moved in, we got up one Sunday morning, I'm ready to go, got the microphone, all the power went out. Then I asked for an offering. The power really went out. If I can't hear you, there's no communication. You're not getting nothing from me. Power is very important. You can't work in your various offices without it. You can't communicate without it. Talked about that. You can't prepare food without it. Some of you can. You can't, you can't, your food will spoil if you don't have power. We're not comfortable when the power goes out. We don't like to light candles. And when it's dark, it's not easy to operate in. Jesus says it like this in John's Gospel, 6th chapter, verse 63. He says, it is the spirit that gives life, or quickens, John 6, 63 and 64, I think it is. It's the spirit that gives life, or quickens, King James, but the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Words have power. Dr. House always says that. And the words that you speak should be words that gives life and also quickening. It is in the words that all of us that we struggle with reaching our potentials in Christ. It's a hard road. Releasing that power that lives inside of us and growing to become all that God intends for us to be. This is actually very common as you walk with Christ. Before you know it, you feel like I'm growing, I'm taking steps forward, and all of a sudden, I feel like I'm stagnant, and I start going backwards. All of that energy and that excitement about being in the church seemingly just dissipates away. Power outage, power outage. The process here that one goes through is a series of actions that carries one into its own potentials. Process is someone that's processing or is going through a process. How many of you like bread in here? Good. Bread goes through a process. If not, you're going to eat dough and flour. But once it goes through the process, it tastes real good. How many in here have ever had a drop biscuit? Down south stuff. But it goes through the same process as bread, but you've never had nothing better than a drop biscuit with some hot butter, with some syrup. Anyway, process. When it goes through the process, it takes good on the other side. Jesus taught in Matthew's gospel about this, that this process takes us to having childlike faith, childlike faith, being, having faith as a child, Matthew 18. In order to enter the kingdom of God, watch this, the kingdom of heaven here, the kingdom of God there. I'm sorry, the kingdom on earth here, the kingdom of heaven there. The kingdom of God there, the kingdom of earth here. So it's childlike faith to go into a higher level, to go into a new dimension, Childlike faith. Say childlike faith. Yeah. It's believing and humbling and sincere heart that one must have. From time to time, we all struggle with childishness and not having childlike faith. It's here the disciples were struggling with childishness and not having childlike faith. The disciples were focusing more on their personal advancement as children do than the advancement of the kingdom. So I must constantly ask myself, Clinton, are you acting more childish or acting childlike? Childlike therefore gives me the ability to unlock the power of God. My faith is less when I'm childish, but it becomes more powerful when I'm childlike. Understanding that all things or anything is possible to them that believe. Childlike is amazing. Mama can be broke as the day long, but that child tells mama, you can make it happen. Look at daddy, it ain't worked in two months. And tell the father, you gonna make it work out because I believe in you. Jesus said, if your earthly parents are more proper to do things for you and they're limited how much more your heavenly father which is in heaven wave at somebody said my daddy ain't broke 
Whatever you need from God, he's able to supply it. The power of God is not only for a few people, but that have power and that act upon the anointed and move upon the anointed of God. I believe it's for all of us. But lack of power in the church today is a direct result of lack of confession that exists on the part of many. You don't really know how powerful you are. Let me bring it back to your mind. One can chase a thousand. Oh, y'all, wake up. I'm, I'm almost through lecturing. And two can put 2,000 to flight. That's why the devil always comes in the church and in the home to bring division in the home, also in the church. Because he know if we just get two or three, can't declare it, I'll be in the midst. And if I'm in the midst, things are going to change right about here. Let me help you out, husband. If you feel a struggle in your family and you're going through that young stages where you don't like him, she don't like you, she's had the baby and she's upset and she's tired of you and you're about trying to get back to her, stop for a moment and just grab hands and say, in the name of Jesus. Devil, you got to leave this house. I'm not going to let you run my family and have me somewhere looking for my own husband and my own wife. You got to go in the name of Jesus. Wait a minute, somebody said, that's a good prayer right there. It ain't long. You ain't got to go in the closet and lay all out. No, just say, in the name of Jesus, get up out my house. Unlocking the power in the church results in, in the confession that one must have to know who we are in Christ and understand where we are in the process of becoming Christ-like. The power of anointing then is released upon us. I believe becoming Christ-like unlocks the power of potentials in one's life, exercising and following the capacity to the full capacity to be used by Jesus. We all have potentials. Everybody in here have potentials. But how do I unlock my identity? Potentials are unlocked by this. What do you love to do that's legal? Potentials are unlocked by first finding what do you love to do? Listen to others about you. Not everybody, but listen to others what they have to say about you. What are your dreams of career? What is your dream career? Surround yourself with people that you love. Find a mentor that you can really look up to and identify your potentials within that. Get this on the tape. Some of y'all listening real good. But potentials are in you to become whoever God has put that seed in you to become. Becoming Christ-like is, is not something we can equal up to. We can't be specifically like him. He did many great, wonderful works, but we have those attributes within inside of us. If I keep focusing on other people, I will never reach my own potentials. Quit looking at all those magazines and all those sports work out and say one day, one day. Just be you you are today and know you got potentials. Go back and find the word and look in the mirror and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works of God's hands. Unlocking the power, unlocking the power. In John's gospel, the third chapter, in verse 34, for God gave the spirit to Jesus without measure. There was no limit given to him by measure. He has power to do all that he wants to do. That same power is released to us as we need it. Paul here speaks in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. He talks about this place of power being perfected in weakness. Paul is processing here the power of unlocking things in his life. It requires him to go through these infirmities, hard pressed places. He's asking God, in 1 Corinthians there, he's asking God, move this from me. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, move this from me. God said, I'm about to unlock something in your life. He says, Paul, listen, I'm not going to remove it, but, 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 but my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly that Paul said, then I will begin to boast and brag on the things of God, of my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. It's although, it's although here Paul is saying here, God did not remove this infirmity from me, but he gave me the power to go through it. The fact that God's power is displayed in weakness should give us courage to know if he brought Paul through, if he brought the Hebrew boys through. If he brought other patriots through in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11 chapter, then he's able to bring us through. As we recognize, Paul says his weaknesses are his limitations. It's here that we deepen our effectiveness to be used by God. It engages here to know that talents are within inside of us, but we're limited on our own. But when Christ began to develop that and mature that character inside of us, it deepens our worship. It deepens our understanding for who God is. 
the limitations let me know that my extremities are only God's opportunities. You see the story in Mark 8 chapter, the man there is a centurion soldier, man in authority, his servant is sick. He came to Jesus, or sent word to Jesus, my servant is sick, come and heal him. As he began to speak the man of his authority, he tells Jesus, you ain't got to come to my house. Just send the word only. That's unlocking power. You ain't got to do a house visit this morning. Just send the word to my house and my servant will be healed. And the word went to the house and the servant was healed. The Bible is showing us here that the healing power of God happened for this man in Mark 8 in the self same hour. When you are strong in your own ability and your resources, you sometimes pride kicks in. God has to bring us to the place of our insufficiency to show his efficiency and what he can do within our life at the end of our limitations. God is filling us with power right now. I knew when God was giving me this message that power was going to be start coming back into the system of the life of the believer. The devil did not want you to turn in this morning or even come back to church to let you know you're not defeated. You're just in the middle of the process. What God's about to bring you to, you don't have quitting on your mind because winning has been all your life. God wants you to be a winner because that's what you are. The enemy thinks that you're broken and that you're at a place that you can't make it and you're not going to get out of this. But when I'm weak, God, that's when I'm strong. When my ability moves out of the way, that's when God steps in and stands up inside of me. Come on, give God a praise for the stand-up man. The stand-up Jesus. The God that's working within your life. Clap in somebody's face, tell them I'll give my power coming back like Samson. I'm not about to go under. I'm about to break and snap, crackle, and pop because I know what God's about to do in my life. God does this. He intends to do this. He brings, he does intend for our lives to be weak and insufficient, but he wants us to understand that we must depend on him. When obstacles come, we must understand that I can depend on God. And right now we're in a very high obstacle. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day, but my sufficiency and my dependency is not on man, but it's on God. And weakness, God keeps us humble and stop depending on our indep being independent, but becoming dependent on God to manifest his evidence in our lives. It is God that does the work. God's power is rooted in our weakness, but is manifested in authority. Say that again. Took me a long time to write that one. God's power is rooted in our weakness, but manifested in authority. Look at you and how frail you are. But you can stand in the mirror and tell the devil, you're not taking me out. I promise you, I'm coming back. Matter of fact, I'm going to start hollering me for my victory come. Yeah, I see the red tag on the door. I see the moving notice on the door. But God is the same for Job as he was for me. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Swing around and wave at somebody say, you're too anointed to quit. It lies inside of you. It lives inside of you. Knowing that God is sovereign and God does what he wants to do when he wants to do it and how he wants to do it. He displays this power in our lives. Some of us see this power display in our life and don't understand why God is using us. However, the process is taken to unlock the Christian journey. Most of us experience this in very different ways to bring about the identity of who we are. See, God puts you in the pressure to see you got the power you ain't been broke before you've been broke before in your life you've been in between a little change and you did some but God knew in the middle of all those things you were going to stick it on out even though it was a hard pressing he was doing something in your life you never pray till you got a problem you never pray till you got pressure it's when you're going through these things you begin to think about how good God is that if he did it once he also can do it again my time, my time, my time are you doing okay? roll over to John's gospel of the 14th chapter look at verse 12 and 14 most assuredly Jesus is saying here teaching about this power he said most assuredly I'm reading I think from New King James I say to you he who believes I have faith in me First John 14, 12 and 4 to 14. Have faith in me. He said, the works that I do, will he do also, and greater works than these. He said, he will do because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified or honored or magnified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, 
I will do it. Talk to yourself, boy. This is a heaven endorsement right here. This is saying I got a blank check and I'm going to ask it in the name of Jesus. But you must ask for it. Don't sit there and don't ask. A closed mouth. But when you open your mouth, God begins to move in an active way. You have an endorsement of heaven because you're moving by God's command. Here we talk to hear about the application that this is for the church of even today. Jesus says, whosoever will do this, he says, I'll bag it up. He's teaching the disciples about the work of the power of the Holy Spirit. How the gospel of the kingdom is going to go beyond Palestine. You're about to become world changers. These disciples went out after the great dispersion and suffering and began to spread that gospel. Are you with me? But they tapped into the power that Jesus had left from on high. And they went about doing these things. Now it's our time. Somebody says our time to tap into the power and go into all the world and preach this gospel. So I'm so grateful and I'm thankful for the Lord for Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Zoom, live streams, Twitter, all these massive platforms of social media to go beyond the world. What's your excuse? Why do you get on your own platform just to promote yourself? Every now and then put some praying hands up, or put, a cross, put something up to identify that you are a believer. Let people know that I'm not just on here to build my own LinkedIn, I'm on here to build the kingdom of God and spread the gospel to whosoever will hear me speaking. Anyone knows that we can do th certain things, but we can't can't do everything Jesus was doing but by faith this kind of faith can move mountains trusting God to do the impossible he says here more importantly don't get it wrong it's not the lack of visible power that's the absence of power just because we don't see it and quit talking about there's no power in the church look at your neighbor and say that's power right there <laughs> ain't no power now I don't see no power in the church wave at somebody say this is power right here if it were not for the grace of God there if it's not for the mercy of God, you wouldn't be sitting up in this house or not watching me on this television. You want to see some power? Look no further right here. He's a keeper. Yeah. Yes, he is. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Power is visible. It does not because you don't see it, but it's right here. Because God is still able to unlock the unknown power within the life of the believer. I'm going too long this morning. Y'all going to bear with me just a little bit more. This power here comes from the soul desire. The soul wants to be connected back to God. Even though you're rebellious in your own will, you're trying to find God. You're trying to get back to where he is. And the soul struggles in his weakness that it must decrease, that you, that Christ Christ might increase. You must get out the way so Christ can become the power in the life of the believer. Paul, Paul, Paul sets the church up in Colossians and he wants them to know that what's happening to you is nothing strange. The Gnostics and those heretics that have gone out Colossians first chapter and fighting against the church because they know that the enemy knows you have an inheritance. That inheritance is in the knowledge of God. He said I'm praying for you that you be filled with the knowledge and the wisdom of God and all spiritual understanding the spiritual strength and might might be inside of you that that power I want you to know I'm praying that you be filled up with all the spiritual knowledge and wisdom of God and that you might be filled with the power and the strength of might, the power of God and the glory and the power and the patience and long suffering and joy that you have been qualified by Christ Jesus himself at the first when my view of this text in first Corinthians first Colossians the first chapter I thought these things were laid out just to be tasked for one to go after but God told me Clinton read it again and take your time Paul was telling them you're combating something that's trying to tear the church apart but Christ has given you Christian power to overcome and this overcoming is through the salvation of Christ I'm writing to you to inform you and to encourage you that those who are in Christ at Christ in Christ at Colossians to not faint in your faith and love and hope for one another I'm trying to tell you that something is about to be unlocked in the church the church is going through a pressure time but God's about to bring it to an elevated glory time he said when I I would not stop praying for you when I continue to ask God to fill you with knowledge of his will through the wisdom and understanding that the spirit of that gives so that you might live your life worthy of the Lord pleasing in him in every way bearing fruit in every good work growing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with the power of God I'm praying for you this is not 
a bedroom or a dinner prayer. This is a prayer that's about to unlock something according to the glorious might of God, the glorious enduring power that give it joyful thanks. I'm praising God because I see you coming out of chains. I see you coming out of depression. I see you coming from loneliness. I see you coming from an abandoned place. I see you getting your happy back. See you getting your joy back. I see you waving for Thanksgiving. I, I see you coming up out of that dark place. I see the cloud moving off of you. I'm praying. I'm touching with somebody else and believing God to pray. Matter of fact, I started praising God in advance because your best days are yet to come. Your battle is all but over. It is God, Colossians, the first chapter, who has delivered you from the kingdom of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. You have redemption and forgiveness of sin. You're too blessed to be stressed. God's been done too much in your life. He has qualified you. Ring around and swing around and tell somebody, I've been qualified. Jacked up life, jacked up mind, jacked up spirit. Did everything I could do to get away from God, but he grabbed me and brought me back and qualified me. Now he's about to unlock me and give me greater power to tap back into. Spirit of wisdom and understanding is the power of God. Stop Clinton. Spirit of wisdom and understanding is the power of God. Remember if nobody else qualified you, God qualified you. Once he qualified you, you have been approved and being approved, you just got it like that. Whoa, don't sit there cow. Remember you were just locked up yesterday. Why don't you praise God for bringing you out today. Give God a shout and a clap and a praise in this house. I got to go deeper. I don't feel the mood, preacher. I don't feel the power. I don't feel God working. Help me out, Ezekiel 47. I came to the water. It touched my ankles. I didn't feel none yet. I went in a little deeper. It was around my knees. I didn't feel none yet. I went to my waist and it went a little deeper. I just felt a little bit, but soon I got the waters I had to swim in. Some of y'all need to go deeper, need to get down the business, step into the deep waters of the Holy Ghost. Ask the waters to overflow you. Ask the water to sweep you away. Give God a praise in this house. It's time for the church to be unlocked. To unlock the church, you got to know your identity. Know who you are and who you are and what you possess. You don't have a little power. You got the power of Christ living inside of you. Put your hand out. Look at somebody say release. 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 Unlock the power. Come on, get on your feet. Thank you for letting me work that out. I, I stopped four pages short, but that's okay. You get the message? Help me again. Step back. Put your hand out like a key. No, don't, don't turn this time. Just push the button. Because I might upgrade. You've just been unlocked. Hold your hands up. Father, we bless you this morning. Thank you for your word for the grace you have given us to unlock the power, the dudamas, the inheritability from Pentecost that resides in the life of your, your children, your people. Oh, if you would open your mouth. Oh, if you would tell the devil, get your hand off my tongue and release yourself to put your head back and give God a hallelujah praise. All oh, that darkness will go away. Blessings will start hitting your house. Miracles will start coming down your street. Change will start happening before you walk out this building because you decided to give God his due in your life. Bless us now and in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen.